So I just want to preface this testimony by saying this, right? Like as Pat said before, this is God's show, and this is ultimately what he's been doing in my life. So I'll just start. So in the beginning, God was graceful enough to put me in the church with my family, and of course, I grew up here. I went to Moana, went to Sunday school, listened to Pat and Juan's sermons. I memorized all those verses, and they give us those uh, chairs. And with these chairs, we could purchase the things that we loved most. Pencils, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I thought, well, I'm a Christian, and naturally that meant that my growth would, could you get the graph, please? If you know me, I'm going to get, yeah. So, my thought was that, after a while, my faith is just going to, you know, really bloom up, and then I'll just become the greatest Christian ever. Unfortunately, that's not how reality works. Um, so I thought that, you know, I would be soaring out to heaven by the time I reach the age of 12. But <laughs> unfortunately, again, that's not how reality works. I'll admit that my perception of God when I was young was rather skewed. This isn't a Juan's fault or really anyone's fault but mine, but I really thought of God as a lowercase God of stickers and hellfire. A God who gave me shares to purchase mechanical pencils, but also would sentence me to death if I didn't believe in him. Now, clearly, God was trying to reach out to me through all these programs, but at the time, my heart was still numb. I, he didn't quite get me there yet. But God works in weird ways. When I was 10, after a piano class, my mom told me after a distressing phone call that my grandpa had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So the months flew by, and again, I was told after a while that he had died in the hospital of said cancer with his hands together in prayer. Now that was kind of surprising to me because I had never really understood or noticed the fact that God was making his way into, into his heart. And through all the people who visited him, through all the people who supported us, I believe that he died on his deathbed praying sinner's prayer. And that is truly something amazing. And through that, I began to slowly, not immediately, but slowly, began to trust God more. I began to realize that God isn't just some ideal. He's a loving person, really. I began to pursue a deeper relationship with him. I went to youth. Group. I went to several retreats, and during this time, I began to realize that God is always there for you. I failed many times. I've sinned many times. I've always collapsed. I've always never quite made it there. I am ashamed and reluctant to say that I rarely ever show God's love or grace in my life. And yet, I know that no matter what, God will always be there because we are making our entire faith, our entire lives on the one fact that Christ died for us on the cross. And no matter what happens to us, no matter how much we fail, nothing's going to change the fact that he died on the cross and then rose. Nothing we do is going to change that simple fact. Could you please change these? Linear <laughs> regression, guys. <laughs> there are going to be ups and downs. But as Pat explained to me when we were uh, going over baptism, all that really matters is that God is going to be picking you up and trying to lift you higher and higher. I'm going to fail. I know that I'm going to collapse. I'm going to high school next year. That is really horrifying to me. I honestly have no idea what's going to happen to me the rest for the rest of my life. But I know, I know that I need God because without Him, I have no hope. So because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, because He is the one thing that we have that will never disappear. I stand here today to ask you all to hold me accountable because I can't do this alone. So please, thank you for everything you've done for me in these years, and I hope to continue to be here. Thanks.